Welcome to the Screen Crush Breakroom. I'm Ryan Airy. So let's talk about timelines, specifically how timelines work in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and why the Time Variance Authority is so intent on preserving this singular sacred timeline. In the first episode of Loki, he points out that it's not his fault he's a variant. I suspect the Avengers. Oh, believe me, you can smell the cologne of two Tony Starks. So, look, first off, Loki has a great sense of smell. Then I walk up and spray him with Tommy Fresh. And I say, uh-oh, looks like you just inhaled your future. But also, like, I was thinking the same thing. The Avengers were recklessly stealing Infinity Stones and altering the flow of time until the Ancient One shamed Banner. In this new branch reality, without our chief weapon against the forces of darkness, our world would be overrun. But instead of the heroes being on trial, the TVA nabs poor Loki. Ravana Renslayer even says, What they did was supposed to happen. Which I'm sure has a lot of you saying, What? But no worries. I'm going to explain how timelines work in the MCU and why the Avengers were able to get away with messing around in time while Loki was arrested for the high crime of being himself. First, let's talk about time travel. We've explained this in a few videos before, so bear with me if you're a longtime fan of the channel. Most of us are probably familiar with the Back to the Future style of time travel, where if you go back in time and alter the past, you change the future. Why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know, and... This is also the time travel theory that we've seen in Star Trek, in episodes such as City on the Edge of Forever, where one good deed causes Hitler to conquer the Earth. <laughs> This is all good fun, but time travel in Marvel Comics and Avengers Endgame doesn't work like this. Back to the Future time travel creates time paradoxes. If Marty McFly prevents his parents from falling in love, he ceases to exist, so he never could have prevented his parents from falling in love. The results of which could cause a chain reaction that would unravel the very fabric of the space-time continuum and destroy the entire universe! So, in Marvel, when characters travel back in time and change events, they don't alter their own past. Instead, they create a new timeline. This new timeline shares there's a common history with the original up until the point when it branches off. For instance, there's an issue of Marvel Team Up where The Thing uses Doctor Doom's time platform to travel back in time and cure himself from being The Thing. When he travels back to the present day, he's still a lovable old orange pile of rocks because what he really did was create an alternate reality and in that reality, Ben Grimm gets to keep being a human. Now, the MCU seems to work just a little differently. From what we've seen, these branches in time are mainly created by removing an Infinity Stone. Like the Ancient One says, The Infinity Stones create what you experience as the flow of time. Remove one of the stones, and that flow splits. So, Loki's true crime wasn't escaping and altering the timeline. It was removing the Tesseract from its proper place in the timeline. When someone removes a stone, they create a variant timeline. And this is why Loki is labeled as a variant. This would explain why the TVA has a drawer filled with Infinity Stones. They're confiscated from the variants who use them to create branches in time. I also think these Infinity Stones no longer have their abilities. See, the stones were created to regulate the flow of time. Hell, actually, maybe even the timekeepers created the darn things to keep the sacred timeline intact. So when a reality branches off, it creates a new timeline with new infinity stones that are now the ultimate power in this new branching universe. But when that universe is scrubbed from existence, which I'll explain in a second, those new infinity stones no longer have any power. So they just toss them in a drawer. Some of the guys use them as paperweights. In an Avengers Endgame deleted scene, the Ancient One describes removing Infinity Stones to create an alternate timeline. For every stone that you remove, you create new, very vulnerable timelines. She even refers to returning the stones as... Branches would be clipped. Which is why Steve Rogers reassures Bruce... Don't worry, Bruce. Clip all the branches. And all around the TVA, we see posters encouraging people to clip the branches of the timeline. The TVA clips these branches by resetting the timeline essentially scrubbing this new reality from existence with these little orange jars. I understand. It's very cool that the TVA uses all of this retro analog equipment. Makes it a lot harder for someone to hack into their files. Unfortunately, we don't have that option in the digital age. That's why for my cybersecurity, I use NordVPN, the sponsor of this video. I love using NordVPN because it also helps me get the most out of my Disney Plus subscription. See, outside the US, Disney offers a whole programming slate called Star that's filled with mature content. There's dramas, adult sitcoms, and R-rated movies like the Alien franchise. Nord has thousands of super fast servers all over the world. 
So you're able to register your IP address from another country where you can watch hundreds of new titles on Disney+. Plus. You get so many options, you can probably cancel one of your other streaming services and the VPN pays for itself. So if you are interested, go to nordvpn.com slash screencrush and get a huge discount off a two year plan and use the code screencrush to get an additional bonus for free. And if you find out the service isn't right for you, there's no pressure, there's a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. Lots of other streaming sites offer different programming in other countries. Using NordVPN is the best way to get your money's worth out of all your streaming services. It's like adding free streaming sites on top of the ones that you're already paying for. Again, visit nordvpn.com slash screencrush or use the code screencrush to get your free bonus or click the link down in the description. Let's do it! In Mobius's mission in France, they say, The branch is nearing red line. Now this red line is like a point of no return. It's when a new timeline is so different and so complicated that it can no longer be trimmed away with these little jars. For instance, Loki steals the Tesseract. No big deal because they find him in the desert and they erase him, timeline saved. But what if Loki escaped, became king of Asgard, invaded Earth, killed Thanos, and wore his purple chin as a hat? That timeline is too different to trim, so it would grow past this red line and become its own powerful timeline. So what's so bad about creating branches in time. Well, in the first episode of Loki, Miss Minutes claims that the timekeepers are trying to prevent another time war when multiple timelines fought one another. It plays out a little differently in the comics. At the end of the universe, the last surviving member of the TVA creates the timekeepers and sends them back in time to create the TVA. So everything the timekeepers do is to assure their own existence. They want to make sure that events unfold precisely to create themselves in the distant future. I'm sure that the sacred timeline is the one where the timekeepers have the most power, so they don't want another timeline to grow out of hand and challenge their supremacy. For instance, Loki is going to be chasing around a variant of himself from another timeline. Maybe this variant can create a branch where he or she is able to conquer the TVA and kill the timekeepers. Then this other Loki would rule that timeline and would challenge the sacred timeline for supremacy. This is why the timekeepers are such hard cases. They've even created a sprawling analog bureaucracy so everyone will be too busy to ask why they're doing all this. Who is it they're actually trying to protect? All right. So that's varying timelines, but that doesn't explain why the Avengers were let off the hook. It still seems very unfair that Loki is on trial for their crimes. Ravana Renslayer says, What they did was supposed to happen. So what does this mean? Well, it goes back to what's called M-theory, or the time is a flat circle theory. I'll let Rust Cole explain. We process time linearly forward from what would be a fourth dimensional perspective. Time wouldn't exist. Now, to us, it's a sphere. But to them, it's a circle. Put another way, Think of the film strip that contained Loki's life. To Loki, it appears in a linear manner. It's events, frames, that follow one another in a linear fashion. Within this film strip, it seems like the character of Loki has choices, but he doesn't. The film has already been shot and developed. He's locked in. Now Loki, from within the film strip, sees it as a straight line, but it's not. Film strips are wound and stored as circles. Mobius and Mobius even says, That's how it is, that's how it was, that's how it will be. And this is also how Dr. Manhattan sees time in The Watchmen, as a construct that is all happening at the same time. It's too late. Always has been. Always will be. Too late. Now that sacred timeline we keep talking about is only a flat line if you look at it from the side. If you saw it from the beginning and end, like the timekeepers do, then you would see that it's a circle. Everything that will happen and could happen is predetermined inside of this circle. So Ravana saying, What they did was supposed to happen. Means that the Avengers were intended to take the stones because they were always going to return the stones. Now back to that flat circle view of the timeline. When a new timeline is created, it disrupts that flat circle. Suddenly, there's a divergence that the TVA can't see the beginning or ending of. The timekeepers would see this branch the way we do, as a straight line, a film strip of a movie, and they don't know the ending. So back to the Avengers. The new branching timelines they created are brought back into line after they return the stones. Because, remember, 
timelines branch out when a stone is removed, because the stones regulate the flow of the sacred timeline. When Loki removed the Tesseract, he had no intention of returning it. That's why he was a variant that needed to be purged from the timeline. Which brings us to the variant of Loki that he's going to help apprehend. But I'm actually thinking that this evil Loki might turn out to be the secret hero of the show. There's a strong possibility the show is going to feature several variant Lokis who aren't played by Tom Hiddleston. In particular, Sofia de Martino could be playing Lady Loki and Richard Grant could be Old Loki, a version of the classic villain from the comics. We did a whole video breaking down Loki's character and his role in Norse mythology in the MCU. Loki is traditionally a god of mischief and chaos. He shakes people loose from their comfortable lives and forces them to become better versions of themselves. In Norse mythology, he instigates Ragnarok, which results in the rebirth of Asgard. In the MCU, he forms the Avengers. Now we've been introduced to a sprawling, complacent bureaucracy that's responsible for preventing the multiverse from existing. But we already know that the multiverse will exist in the MCU. We've seen glimpses of alternate realities in the new What If show. There are rumors that Spider-Man will face villains from the multiverse in No Way Home. And oh yeah, Doctor Strange's sequel is called The Multiverse of Madness. So it's likely that the Loki variants are undermining the Timekeepers and trying to create their own realities. And I think that it's likely that they're going to win. This shot of Loki speaking to a woman could be him and a female variant at the end of the universe, when she's trying to prevent the timekeepers from existing. With the TVA gone, the universe will be free to spread out into multiple timelines. This could end up being a bad thing that destroys reality. Or maybe creating an infinite number of variant heroes will allow all of them to unite to face some greater threat. Imagine the battle at the end of Endgame, but with the X-Men from the Fox universe, with Spider-Man from the Raimi films, with Marvel zombies and vampires, even your mom. Say hi to your mom for me. But if you have any questions about the timelines, let me know down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.